Hey, Gators and sports fans, get all your Gator talk, news, analysis, and opinions on the Pod Up with Matthews in the morning podcast. Find us on your favorite podcast platform or watch us on Facebook Live between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. every weekday. Pod Up, because we are Gator fans. So say, it's great to be a Florida Gator. Good morning and welcome to a Friday edition. It's Football Friday. A pot up with Matthews in the morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Large enough to serve you, small enough to care. I appreciate you joining the program today. Today's show is going to consist of our man JC. He and I will have our picks here shortly. We'll talk a little sports before that. And then we'll be joined by the voice of the South Carolina Gamecocks and former quarterback, Todd Ellis, but let's go ahead and kick it off and go straight to the Titan MR hotline. And we're joined by John Cornell, better known as JC around the world. Good morning, JC. How are you? Uh, Yes, sir. How are you doing there, QB? It is a fabulous Friday, man. I'm, uh, I'm really happy. The weekend is almost here. Uh, We've got some great weather. I seem to always talk about that. And, um, certainly you seem uh, you seem to want to be a weatherman. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> some people used to think i was when i was at the in the glory days at tv 20 <laughs> it shows you how hard they watched the sports cast that day those days but anyway um certainly a big football weekend here in town um i don't know i'm somewhat subdued by the idea that there won't be any tailgating and there certainly won't be eighty five thousand fans there like there normally would but at least we get the game we get uh, South Carolina coming in town. I know all week you've talked about the Gamecocks and the Gators, and certainly uh, this will be a, a big challenge for Florida to come home and try to improve on some things that obviously were some uh, holes that, that you could poke at after that first game against Mississippi. But I always have said, and I think you've agreed, that usually teams improve the most from the first game to the second. Or uh, a lot I've of never said do. that. I'm not well, one that I says thought, that. I, I thought you did, but okay. No, I did. That's say some that. stupid. Well, I, that's some dumb coaching cliche. Why, why is uh, that? It makes dumb? no sense. I, mean, I, I, hear, I. Well, do you not think that teams get better from the first game to the second? Really? No, because they can get worse. I, I get that, but they. But you usually get better. I, you get better after about five or six games. Five or six. I just. I've never well, understood that. Well, well, I've heard a lot of it. I've heard it on the radio. I've heard it on TV, and I have heard coaches say that. So I tend to go with what they say, and I certainly think that you know we had some some evidence of that this year with some teams. I think the University of Miami is a great example of that. I certainly think they got better in that second game from their first uh, when they played UAB and then played up at Louisville and and dominated that game. Uh, certainly, Florida State did not. But uh, Florida State had a week off and a lot of distractions with their coach going down with the COVID nineteen and. And I, I guess there, it is true that some teams probably could get worse, but I think the prevailing uh, thought is, or many, not including yours, but many do believe that teams are better after they've played a game. And so yeah, um, I, I, I don't know if Florida is going to be any better on defense uh, tomorrow. I don't think South Carolina's offense is nearly as prolific as Mississippi's is. But at the same token, Mississippi doesn't have an SEC caliber defense, and South Carolina does. They've got two cornerbacks who are six foot four, and I would expect one of them to be covering Kyle Pitts for most of the game. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be much tougher tomorrow. Um, we'll have a yeah. good plan. You know, you know. Here's a great stat for you, JC. Did you realize the last two games against South Carolina, they've had to lead going into the fourth quarter? Yeah, I, I did see that, and and you know they will play Florida tough, but you know this Florida team, I think, has a real opportunity to continue what a lot of people may have been surprised to see with how good the offense was. And again, I I go back to the fact that Mississippi's defense is not the caliber SEC defense that you would expect to see in this conference. They are so undermanned and just have no talent whatsoever on that side of the ball. But Florida did what Florida is supposed to do, and that was exploit their weaknesses and score points and score a lot of points. Um, I don't know. I mean, this game will be obviously, I think, lower scoring. But I am curious how Colin Hill's going to play. I certainly don't think that South Carolina is going to score as many points on Florida as Mississippi did. But, you know, they got some weapons and they got some guys who can play. So it should be a much closer game, even though the odds makers are, are making this a pretty big, big number. I think it's going to be a, a close dog fight. I think it's going to be very high scoring, though. Uh, Fran- yeah, okay. yeah I, I, their offense is pretty good. Uh, Francis uh, says here on Facebook Live, brought to you by Mel Law, where you matter most. 
I watched him on TV 20 when they would misspell <laughs> words. When they oh, would misspell words, he would tap his pen or pencil. He was very good was, in the sports segment. I was not happy with the way Oklahoma was scored with an A in, in between the O and the K and the way Illinois was scored with one L. And, uh, you know, there were some things that just I couldn't – I had these pet peeves when I did television. And one of the things, and it still stays true today, is that I just can't tolerate misspellings. People that misspell to me are generally lazy thinkers. Now, that might not be fair – but I don't think spelling is a, a, a very – I think spelling is a very important thing. Well, and so when I, was do, when I was doing the sports cast, man, you better spell – because I spelled it right. So if I spelled it right, you can't spell it right on the machine that puts all the letters up there. It's called a Chiron machine. If you can't spell it right, even if it's spelled correctly, there's something going on there, and we had to coach those guys up. Why, why did you not proofread the other person's work? Well, remember, I, I printed the script. I produced the whole show. Now, they don't do that anymore. Today, all they do is show up and put makeup on. But I had to produce everything. I edited the video. I wrote the scripts. I did it all. I shot the video. I did the interviews. I did the editing. And, and basically, what I would do is turn in the script at the guy on the camera machine. It's called pre-production. He would go in and type in all of the things that I'm going to show the audience. I was on the set at the time he's doing this. And so I don't get to see what he does while I'm on the set getting ready for my, my, my segment uh, or my block, as they call it, on the rundown. So I was usually in the D block. You have the A block, the B block, the commercials, weather, C block, and then the D block is sports because we were always the last thing to show during a 30-minute uh, newscast. So when he misspelled things and I saw it on the screen, I freaked out. In fact, I got so upset one time I started pronouncing it the way he was spelling it. So when he spelled Oklahoma with an A in f between the O and the K, I said Oak, Oklahoma, and you know, and and, th and they got mad at me for doing that. The producer was pissed. The director, the news director, was pissed because he said I was, I was basically showing up the guy who messed up, or I was emphasizing something we did wrong, and that's really true. You shouldn't do that as the talent. But after it happens over and over again, at some point, if you don't do something, it's going to keep happening. So I did something, and guess what? It started getting better when I started to uh, show up the people that weren't doing their jobs on the air on live TV, and they didn't like that. But, you know, something – sometimes – you know, when I was doing radio with UQB, I used to make fun of the Gainesville Sun Sports section because of some of the glaring, awful things they would have in there in terms of mistakes with box scores and so forth. And Feliciano calls up my – the radio guy, a Boomer, and he complains to me, to, to Boomer about that. The other guy, Kevin, who was a writer – uh, liked it because he said it made them better. And so it really just depends. But, you know, spelling, I just can't handle it, man. I cannot okay. handle misspelling. <clears throat> so we got Re that out of the way. Refresh your vehicle and your brand with a vehicle wrap from Rap Spot. September's your lucky month at Rap Spot. Mention promo code Shane and receive 13% off your vehicle wrap. Speaking with John Cornell here um, later in the show, we will be joined by Todd Ellis talking South Carolina. So, JC, football. before we get into yeah. college football, we're going to have our picks. Uh, we're going to do our picks today, which is brought to you by right. Peachland Dentistry. Right. Um, baseball, you watched any of the baseball? We obviously yeah. you watched the Yankees. You have your Yankees hat because uh, they won. Baby. Oh, my God. I was up till 1 o'clock in the morning watching that QB, and what a great comeback of the ninth inning. Um, but the game last night between San Diego and St. Louis was tremendous. Not to overshadow what Atlanta did to Cincinnati with two shutouts, which I think is a record. Uh, Cincinnati not scoring any runs. The well, Braves are just a suffering. Atlanta, the, Atlanta the is, people, when they came into the, the uh, playoffs, Atlanta, they, they have a tremendous lineup. They can swing the bats. But their, their whole issue was they couldn't pitch. <laughs> two well, games, they can pitch two games. They haven't, uh, they didn't give up a run. So, um, right. right. Now yeah, who do the San Braves Diego face get, now? So the Braves are going to go out West and wait for the, uh, actually they're going to go to Texas. They're going to go to Texas. And I think they're going to wait for the, um, Cubs Brewers winner. And I'm sorry, Cubs Marlins winner. Uh, the Brewers lost to the Dodgers last night. So the Dodgers advanced, but the Cubs Marlins winner will play the Braves in Texas, in Arlington, and right now the Marlins lead that series one nothing. They will play the Cubs today at 2 o'clock. If the Marlins can beat the Cubs, the Marlins will go play Atlanta in Texas. St. Louis and San Diego last night, the Cardinals were up 6-2. to two. The Padres started booming home runs. Tatis had two, 
Will Myers had two, and Machado had one. So five home runs helped power the Padres to an 11-9 win over St. Louis, and they will play their, their final game of that three-game series to see who advances to face. Um, I, I would assume it would then be either L.A. or – well, it would be the Dodgers. So they would then play the Dodgers. So um, in the American League, the Yankees are moving on. They will play the Tampa Bay Rays, and the Oakland A's beat the White Sox 6-4. to four, So they will also move on. So who, who do you think uh, is going to advance? Well, I, I'm going to say that right now the Rays are the hottest thing going, but I'm going to root well, for the Yankees. Well, they're the favorite. Right. So, so they, they are favored to win doesn't mean they will. But New York is all about <laughs> offense, right? So the Yankees, if they hit the ball and they can get through Tampa Bay's pitching, I think should win that, that series. If they get Garrett Cole ready to go, do you want to face Garrett Cole? I mean, really, he's the best playoff pitcher we've seen in the last three years. So the Yankees have him. And in a series like this, you want to have good pitching, and certainly Tampa has that. So I'm really excited to see how that goes. And, I, you know, if Tampa wins, then Tampa wins, and I'm not going to be sad about that, but I'm rooting for my Yanks. Um, but obviously the, uh, the Braves look really strong, and so do the Dodgers. And it may end up being those two to see who goes uh, to Texas to play in the World Series for the National League. The NBA Finals resume tonight. Uh, Lakers have a 1-0 lead. Uh, they're probably going to sweep the Heat. The Heat have yeah. t- several injuries now that uh, yeah. are not going to make them yeah. very competitive. Um, yeah, not much drama there, no. JC, did you watch any of the NFL game last yeah, night? I did. You know, you know, for a game that had probably two of the worst teams in the league, although, although the Giants could be making that claim as well, it was pretty entertaining, lots of offense. And uh, Brett Rippon really uh, showed up last night with two touchdown passes and over 240 yards passing. Melvin Gordon also had two touchdown runs. And Denver gets 37 points, so I didn't see that coming. Uh, The Jets got 28 points. I didn't see that coming either. Um, But, again, you've got two of the the worst teams in the league. Now, Denver's had some injuries, in all fairness, to Denver. But uh, you have to be happy with what Rippon was able to do with 242 yards and two touchdowns. You don't have to – he doesn't have to light the world on fire to beat the Jets, right? So – uh, 37 points was enough for sure, and I thought it was pretty entertaining. I did watch some of that, but I was honed in mostly on that baseball game because at first when I look <laughs> at that and I think, my God, you've got the NFL, or rather the um, uh, the folks that do Thursday night, I guess it's the uh, – I don't know who paid half a billion dollars for Thursday night football, but whoever showed it last, I guess it was um, TBF, TNT, I don't know. But uh, – that's a lot of money to pay for the Broncos and the Jets to start off your Thursday night football. But, um, you know, it was a pretty entertaining game. We got a Facebook live <laughs> question <laughs> brought to you by Melton Law, where you matter most. It comes from Russell. Russell wants Russell. to know, if two, if two Bama fans get a divorce, are they still cousins? <laughs> That's great, Russell. Very creative on a Friday. Very impressive. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's funny. Well, it's – True. No. Um, so, JC, let's. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to talk a little more college football. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back and do our picks. And you've picked the games. Oh yeah. We're going to pick against the, the spread. We, yes, we, we can't are. remember. We can't remember what the the uh, outcomes were last week because nobody wrote them down. But you're going to take good. Uh, I'll take bookkeeper. a record. And, and there, yeah, and there's so much added value with what we do compared to what you see on these NFL Sunday shows where the lock of the week is the Colts over the Jets. You know, I mean, you really need that kind of information from guys like Michael Irvin and those those who I love, by the way. I love the NFL to, uh, network, and, but they just pick winners. You know, oh, I think the I think the the you know, I think the uh, the Chiefs are going to win this weekend. I mean, come on. You got to pick it by the number. So that's what we're going to do, QB. That's what we're going to do. All right. So uh, what we're going to take, we're going to take our first time out of the program right here at Center State Bank. We put business first. We're the largest community bank in the state of Florida and understand that small businesses need a community business partner that they can rely on. Center State has five convenient Alachua County locations to serve you better. Center State Bank, member FDIC. We're going to take our first time out of the program. We come back. We'll have our Peachland Dental. JC and the QB oh, yeah. weekend pick. Peach Lad Dental, my dentistry. All right. Hey, Gator Nation. This is your former head ball coach, Steve Spurrier. Check out our show, Inside the Huddle, with Shane Matthews and Steve Russell, every Tuesday during football season on 8.50 a.m. and 98.1 FM WRUF at 10 o'clock a.m. We want to take this moment to thank all our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Our Gridiron sponsors are Crime Prevention Security Systems, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. 
Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Area Rug Masters, your number one choice in Gainesville for all your rug cleaning services. Meldon Law, where you matter most. Peachland Dental, Cater Nation's first choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte. Celebration Point Town Center, Center State Bank, Chris Doring Mortgage. Some of our touchdown sponsors are Campus USA Credit Union, The Digital Mortgage Guy, Adams Ribs, Doreen Weeby Realtor, Caldwell Banker M.M. Parrish, Gator Dominoes, Celebrate Primary Care, Davis Gainesville Chevrolet, Miapa Latin Cafe, Rap Spot, Okito America, Gators Dockside, Radware, Style Cuts, Ironwood Golf Course, TB Financial, Meadowbrook Golf Course, Dar Shackow Insurance. Again, thank you for all the great businesses that support the show. Please remember, if you like what we are doing here, thank our sponsors and support the businesses that support us. Welcome back to a Friday edition of Pot Up with Matthews in the Morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Celebration points where the Gators go to celebrate. With premium brands like Bass Pro Shop, Tommy Hilfiger, Hotel Indigo, Nike, Medici's, Regal Cinemas, and coming spring of 2021, the HBC's new restaurant, Spurrier's Gridiron Grill, and Visor's Rooftop Bar. We will see you at Celebration Point, where the Gators come to celebrate. Uh, we still have JC on the Titan Amar Hotline, and we are getting ready to uh, – we'll have Todd Ellis join us here uh, after we do our Peachland oh, Todd. Dentistry. Gator yeah. Nation's number one choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte and surrounding areas. Now it's yeah. time for the Peachland Dentistry right. JC and the QB oh. weekend picks. Yes, yes, it is. This is what everybody has breathlessly waited for throughout the week, QB. I mean, why? I agree. So, what, I mean, what, it is. Give us the first game, uh, JC. What do we got? Okay, here we go. We're starting it off. We're not. We're going to start off with some uh, three big, big uh, twelve games. Before we get into the SEC, obviously still waiting on the Pac-12 and the Big Ten to join uh, the football world uh, this month with the Big Ten on the 24th. Uh, first game is Oklahoma after a tough loss at home to Kansas State, laying seven points at Jack Tri Stadium and the Iowa State Cyclones who got a big win over TCU last week. Oklahoma minus seven. Gosh, that's tough because uh, I think yeah. Oklahoma's going to come out and put it all over them. But but I, Iowa State, I can't figure them out. Uh, I know. They, they, they should have lost. They should be 0-2. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go, even though there's really no home field advantage anymore, no, I'm going to think – I'm going to say Iowa State keeps it close because of their style okay. of play. They will bore you to death. Uh, so I'm going <laughs> to take, take the Cyclones. I'm kind of surprised you picked that because of your beloved Sooners and how they would respond after a loss would make you think that seven might not be enough. But, again, they don't, def they don't defend very well, and I don't know why that happens year in and year out. And I'm with you there. I think i got to take the Iowa State Cyclones, who traditionally play Oklahoma tough. I don't know why, but they've won at times as a 20-point underdog. So, yeah, I'll go with Iowa State with you. Uh, getting the seven points. Game two is, I think, a pretty easy one. Uh, Baylor is only laying a field goal at West Virginia. Baylor got a uh, score some 40-some-odd points in their first game. West Virginia lost in their first game. So Baylor's only laying three, though. That's kind of uh, surprising to me at West Virginia. Well, that sounds fishy. Um, that does, doesn't it? I'm going to yes, take the Mountaineers uh, at home. Oh. Um, I don't know. Okay. They, it seems like Baylor's a much better team than them, and it seems like Baylor yeah. should be favored by seven or eight points. Uh, so right. maybe, they, as they say, those those folks out west must know something. Well, they do, and I don't blame you for taking that pick. But I'm going to take Baylor because I think Aranda is um, is is a winner, and I think Baylor is a better team than many people think. I think they're pretty dangerous. I'm laying the three with Baylor for sure. Third game is Texas. The Longhorns are laying 11 and a half. They're playing TCU, and this is a team that, that had a high-scoring game against Iowa State last week and lost by three, but Texas also had to recover an onside kick to survive Texas Tech and then score and then win in overtime and allowed a lot of points. 11 and a half, QB. What do you think? Uh, I, I'm just not sold on Tom Herman and, and the Longhorns. Um, I like Sam Ellinger at quarterback, but they just – First of all, Texas Tech is not a very good team, and they were extremely fortunate to win last week. 
a lot of mm-hmm. stuff had to happen for them. And give them credit; they did win the game. Uh, yeah. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna take the Horn Frogs. Yep, yep, yep. I agree with that. Eleven and a half is too many. It, it should be around six, maybe five or six, if that. And I'm gonna take the uh, TCU Horn Frogs getting eleven and a half. We go to the SEC QB, and we started off with an early game: Kentucky uh, and Mississippi. Kentucky is only a five-point favorite at home in Lexington, Mississippi, uh, coming in with a high-powered offense, no defense. Uh, you know, Kentucky, Mississippi, minus five. Um, I'm going to lean towards the Wildcats. Uh, I, I think Kentucky is a, a, a pretty, a really good football team. They let the game slip away. Um, it's going to be interesting at their quarterback position. Joey Gatewood, who transferred from Auburn, right. finally got Auburn. approved to play, got his waiver. So yep. will he get any playing time? Because honestly, Terry Wilson killed uh, no. Kentucky last week. He um, did. They had Auburn beat. So they did. I'm going to think, and, and and Kentucky is really good on both lines of scrimmage, and I think they will dominate Ole Miss on the line of scrimmage in this game. And I think the Wildcats will win something like 38 to 25. Yeah, I think it's a double digit win too. I mean, I don't know why we're agreeing so much here, but Kentucky is a better team. And the line of scrimmage is the biggest thing. I think you're right. I think Kentucky uh, will run. Kentucky I mean, will run for over 300 over. yards. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking too. They're not going to ask the quarterback to do much, and Kentucky will will win this game by double digits. Mississippi State is back in Starkville. They are playing the Hogs of Arkansas, who gave uh, Georgia a pretty good game in the first half until Georgia decided to get smart and change the quarterback. And Mississippi State is laying 17 points. At home, we all saw what they did against LSU and all that offense. Um, maybe this is just not enough points here. I don't know. Mississippi State's getting 17. The last time Felipe played in Starkville, though, he won. But that was with Florida. That means absolutely nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you would like to hear that. I thought that was interesting, though. Did you not think Felipe? Yeah, was that, was, that, was a great, that was a great nugget you <laughs> threw in there. Um, <laughs> the, Hogs, the Hogs, what impressed me about Arkansas – they they played hard, and yeah. that's what the new head coach. That's one thing you want to see from your kids is how the effort and how hard do you play. They played extremely hard. They can play as hard as they freaking want Saturday or tomorrow. It ain't gonna matter yeah. because no. Leach will score at will, in my opinion, on them. And this this yeah. is gonna be a forty eight seventeen type game, in my opinion. Right. I think Mississippi State. Now again, Mississippi State, all their players been hearing about. How great That's they how are, good they all are. this, yeah. that, and the other. Yep, yep, but yep, when it comes yep, to the yep. passing game, I just think K.J. Costello, they're just going to light up Arkansas. I think this is a blowout. I, I would think Arkansas might play more zone defense than LSU did. I don't think it'll matter. But uh, certainly Mississippi State has to watch out for that, uh, you know, that uh, you're, you're great uh, scenario. And, and certainly everybody in the country has been talking about them. But I'm with you, dude. I think uh, 17 points is not enough. I think it's more of a 27-point game. Tennessee is at home against Missouri. The Vols are laying 12. My Vols. Yeah, I'm taking Missouri Tigers here. Uh, I'm not sold on Tennessee <laughs> at all. You know, if Tennessee was that good, J.C., they would be favored by 17 or 18 points. I, I just think Missouri – I thought Missouri – I, I like Eli Drinkwich. I think he's going to be a good coach out there for what Missouri does. Uh, I'm just not sold on Tennessee yet, so I'm going with the Missouri Tigers. Well, I watched that Missouri team play Alabama, and, you know, it's it's pretty typical. Alabama has a way of making teams look bad. And certainly I don't think Missouri is as bad as Alabama made them look in the first half. Uh, they could have named their score, but Saban took everybody out in the second half mostly. And Missouri uh, hung in there, and, and I think you're right about the coach. Uh, that's a lot of points to, to lay for a team that is on Ain't a little bit good. of a roll right now. Yeah, well, we're going to see how good they are, I think, because if this is a real Tennessee team to keep your, your eye on, they will cover this spread. So I'm going to take them by two touchdowns to cover the 12. It'll be close, and uh, you can take Missouri. So that's the second game that we don't have the same pick. Uh, speaking of Alabama, they will be at home against Texas A&M. Uh, I've always said that if you're going to beat Alabama, your quarterback has to stand on his head and play a great game. And this is where Kellen Mond is either going to have to do it or they're going to get killed. So I think Alabama minus 17 and a half is a very interesting number against A&M. The tide does not cover many spreads because a lot of times in the second half, they just don't keep the gas pedal pushed. So um, that's a big number. And Texas A&M is a physical team. 
Uh, but Kellamon's got to play well. Who do you, who do you think's going to cover in this game? I think Alabama blows them out. I just I'm not sold. I saw a stat the other day that that Jimbo is like one in seven against top ten teams since he's taken yeah, over at A and M. Yeah. Until they beat somebody, I can't buy into A and M at all. Uh, well, you know they they struggle game one against Vanderbilt and give Vanderbilt a lot of credit, but I think everyone knows that Vanderbilt uh, is probably not going to win a game this year. Right. Um, a, a program like A and M should not win seventeen to twelve against Vanderbilt at home. I agree. I so agree. What do you? I just what do you think, think Alabama. Of gonna, say that again, Kellen Mom. What do you think of him? He's been playing. He's been the starter. It seems like for six years. Uh, yeah. He is what he is. Uh, I think he'll have to play at an extremely high level and make plays that he normally doesn't make to keep this game close. I just think Alabama. Um, you know what I'm, I'm anxious to see is how Alabama's defense plays uh, and, right. and what Jimbo dials up offensively. We know right. Alabama's going to move the fo- – you know, this is what's crazy, JC. I'm sitting here telling you, we know Alabama's going to be explosive and move the football. Yes. But we're not sure about their defense because Alabama right. hasn't had played great defense in the last four or five years. Alabama is, um, is, is healthier than they were last year. I, I think their defense, watching that first half against Missouri, is more aggressive and better. But we'll see if they're tested. We'll see how they respond. To me, Texas A&M getting a, those, the, that many points uh, screams backdoor cover. And I think this is a kind of a 38-24 type game because A&M will score a late touchdown or something <laughs> like that. So I'll take the 17.5 points, but Alabama will, will score plenty of points to win this game comfortably. Uh, Georgia is at home. This is the game of the week in the SEC. Georgia and Auburn, the oldest rivalry in the SEC, and a game that's typically played in late November, now moved up to week two. I find that very interesting. And Auburn is coming in as a a six-and-a-half-point underdog. What do you think, QB? I like the dogs. I think they're going to hammer Auburn. You do? You like the dogs? The reason I say that, J.C., is because if you go back and and Auburn – Lost four starters off last year's offensive line. They lost all those big, t- big defensive linemen to the draft. Uh-huh. And if you watch the Kentucky game, Kentucky handled the sc- line of scrimmage in that game. Right. I think right. Georgia wants to run the football. I think their yep. offensive line has a long ways to go. But I think Georgia's defense is outstanding. And I think Bo Nix is going to have yeah. a long day. Now, I, yeah. I assume JT Daniels is going to start. But right. it would not shock me at all if they don't make a move to Stetson Bennett because right. I'm telling you, the kid understands how to play the game and how to how to run an offense. Um, but I, I think Georgia is just going to be too good on defense, and I'm not sold on Bo Nix and, and Auburn's offense right now. Okay, so yeah, I see that uh, six and a half is that's a big number in a real rivalry game like this. But I think the way you broke it down makes a lot of sense because I too believe that Kentucky. Uh, really did give Auburn a lot of breaks. And um, it, it wasn't as if Auburn did anything special in that game. Uh, Georgia had to wake up in the second half, but they've got the right guy behind center. And you're right about that defense, man. It is salty. And I agree with you about Georgia. I think they cover this game win by 10. Uh, the game here at Gainesville is our last uh, college game of the week, and it's Florida laying the 18 against South Carolina. And I'm just going to predict that you take the points in this one. Um. You know, I'm I'm kind of what did what did you say? It's eighteen, eighteen. Yeah, I for some reason think this game's going to be close. Uh, the only reason <laughs> so, I say that, well, the only reason I say it is because South Carolina's had us beaten in the fourth quarter the last two years. Now I think we're better this year. I do think I think South Carolina's better football team this year too. I think Colin Hill, he's a fifth year quarterback. Mm-hmm. He knows Bobo's right. system. Right. Um, you know, it, it's all going to come down to. I, I want to say – I'm not going to sit here and tell you that South Carolina wants to run the football, stay on the field because they're a little more – I don't want to – dynamic may not be the right word, but they're more versatile offensively than they've been in the in the past few years. Uh, so I think I think the Gators are going to win like a 38-24 type game. Okay, and I got 34-17. So 34-17, 38-24, basically the same type of score they – they don't quite get the 18 points, so we'll take the points in South Carolina, but we both see Florida winning by just over two touchdowns or around two touchdowns. So that gets us uh, the uh, – Well, first of all, I'm shocked you – there's one game on here that I'm surprised you didn't have on there. I'm sorry. Good Memphis point. and SMU. I think that's going to be an awesome game. That. 
I did look at that. Um, go ahead and throw it out there. What do you think? I, I think SMU wins. Well, they're at home and they're they're getting yeah. points. I, I agree with you. I think SMU yeah. is a very good under the radar type team. Yeah, yeah. Shane yes, Bouchelle, who's been playing quarterback either at Texas or SMU for seems like for six or seven years. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like SMU in that game. I, I do too. Plus, you can drink beer in the stadium there on campus at SMU. Uh, so it's a lot of fun going to Ponyland. Um, that's in the middle of Dallas, Texas, by the way. Uh, small campus, about 10,000 uh, people enrolled. Uh, the NFL game of the week. Are you ready for this, QB? The NFL game of the week? Yeah. The NFL game of the week is the Buffalo Bills undefeated, 3-0, traveling across the country to face John Gruden and the Las Vegas Raiders, who are 2-1, and one, uh, have looked pretty good, but really didn't look very good last week. But Buffalo is uh, minus three at Vegas, uh, three time zones away. The Bills trying to go 4-0 oh with Josh Allen. Who do you like mm. with that field goal, QB? That's, that's the game of the week, by the way. The other game I looked at was the Kansas City game with New England. But I went with Buffalo and the Raiders. Well, we can because... we can do them both. How about we do them both? Okay, you want to do them both? We'll do them both. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Josh, um, Buffalo at Vegas. I, I'm going to lean towards Buffalo. I just think I think they're they're really good on defense. I know they gave up a bunch of points, but I think the Rams are tough to stop offensively. I think yes, Josh Allen's playing at a high level. Um, mm-hmm. His running ability is really hurting teams. Um, I'm not sold on the Raiders' defense. So I'm going to lean. <clears throat> excuse me, lean. Do you want to take Buffalo? Bills. Yeah, I, I tell you, I really like this Buffalo team. I'm kind of surprised though that teams have been able to score on Buffalo because of how good their defense. I mean, it's not much different than it was last year, but it seems like teams are having more success at least this early in the season scoring points. The Dolphins scored points on Buffalo. The Rams finally figured it out and scored some points on Buffalo. But before that <laughs> happened, the Bills really shut them down. The Raiders are a funny team. I. I you know, on any given day, they can beat anybody, and then they can turn right around and lose to a, a sub-500 team. I don't understand the Raiders. So, with that, I'm with you. I'm taking the Bills, laying the three. But I'm not – I'm a, that's a nervous field goal right there for me. It should be more than that, and it's not. And that tells me the Raiders <laughs> could easily win this game outright. Uh, but I'm taking Buffalo with you. The Patriots are getting seven against the Chefs. Uh, seven is a lot of points in the NFL, as you know. And you give Bill Belichick seven points, my man. That's a big number, but the Chiefs are the Chiefs. I, I know who you're going to go with, so I'm just going to go ahead and write it down. Kansas City minus seven for you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just think they got too much <laughs> firepower. Now, the, the Patriots are playing really good on defense. I think they Cam, are. they've kind of altered their, their offensive system around Cam and his running ability, which I get. Uh, uh-huh. The only way, only way the Patriots can win this game is if Cam throws the ball extremely well. And I don't know if he can outduel um, no. Patrick Mahomes. No, um, I don't think so. I mean, the Chiefs will have to turn the ball over, right? <clears throat> I mean, that's that's the way it, it, it seems to be. If, if Kansas City's if Kansas City is Kansas City, I, I mean, they score as many as they want, right? So pretty much. Uh, but New Eng- but New England, you know, that Belichick, he's a tricky one, and you're getting seven points. How many times have you been able to say I'm catching seven points with New England? Not, not many. <clears throat> yeah. Not so, often. so I'll I'll just 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 because I want to be different and you know not take the easy pick. I'll I'll get the seven. And let you win this one. Uh, maybe <laughs> New England can can cover. <laughs> I don't know. I, I but I think Kansas City wins the game. But seven's a lot in the NFL, and New England certainly is playing well on that side of the ball. So there you go, QB. We have we have um, we have a couple of different picks. <clears throat> Uh, three or four different picks. Uh, two. Let's see. We have a different pick on Alabama, Tennessee. We have a uh, t- Texas A&M. We have a different pick with um, Missouri and Tennessee, and we have a different pick with Baylor and West Virginia. Those are the three differences that we have on the spreads. It'd be interesting to see how we turn out on Monday. Uh, but I, I, I'm quite confident in these these picks. And right that's uh, our JC and QB weekend picks brought to you by our good friends at Peachland Dentistry. Oh, JC, yeah. before yes, we sir. let you go and we get to Todd Ellis, right. I got a couple of nuggets here. I want you. Uh, did I love Todd? By the way, yeah, the Gamecocks, the Gamecocks score. If I scored. ask, if I if I, I ask you guy. in the NBA Finals, okay? Yes, in the NBA which, Finals, which which NCAA conference has the most? Players playing in the um, NBA Finals, what would you say? 
Well, since I know all of about three players on both teams, um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I'll say the SEC. <laughs> You're right. Nine oh, former- I got it. I got well, it. I mean, why, I why, you know why, why else I got would, it? Because okay. why else would I ask this question? Because I'm That's an SEC homer. But that goes no to doubt. show you how good the SEC is in basketball. Nine former SEC men's basketball players are representing six different schools in the NBA Finals. That is more yeah. than double the toll of any other conference. What is, other than Anthony Davis from Kentucky, give me some other names. Rajon Rondo, Tyler oh, of Hero, course. Bam Adebayo. Um, Where did Bam play? Where did Bam play? Kentucky. He was the damn he oh, made he all stars Kentucky. this year. So basically we're saying Kentucky here. All these well, Udonis, Udonis Haslam is still for the Heat. Okay. Yeah, he plays. Um, he's still playing I, for the Heat. Well, I'd have to think about it, but yeah, they're uh, – Yeah. Okay, yeah. so before we let you go, another nugget here. <clears throat> of the current 65 Power 5 head coaches, only four did not play college football. Can you name them? Of the – how many college coaches? How many well, did you say? There's 65 college coaches in Power 5. Okay. Power five right. team, sixty five head did coaches. not did not did play not college play football. college football. Two of them are in, two are in the a. Okay, here I'm. I'm give you a hint. Okay, They're, two are in the ACC coaching, and mm-hmm. two are in the SEC. Coaching. The SEC. I'm going to go with. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Dan Mullen. Nope, he played at Ursinus. Played Ursinus. tight end at Ursinus. Okay, well then I'm going to I'm going to say I'm going to say uh, Mike Leach. Yeah, Mike Leach is one. One of them. And then I'm also going to go with um, – give me a second here. Just give me a second. Uh, gosh. Um, Jimbo? Nope. Nope. You need a hint? There is, he coaches in the yeah. East. Oh, okay. Well, if he coaches in the East, it's obviously going to be uh, the uh, – well, it's not the South Carolina coach. It's not the Georgia coach. It's not the Florida coach. It's not the Kentucky. I'm going to say uh, – is it Stoops? No. No, he played. It's Eli Drinkwitz. Yeah. Drinkwitz. Okay. Gee whiz. I so, should be able so to get that. Who are the other two, who are the other two coaches? Whiz. They're both in the ACC. Okay. Josh. You, need you got me on the spot here. You got me on the spot here. I, I just need to think about this a little bit longer. This guy's yeah, coached a lot of really good quarterbacks. Oh, my goodness. Um Oh, boy. A lot of good quarterbacks. Uh, is it uh, Clawson? Nope, it's David Cutcliffe. Oh, Dave, yeah. Well, and the other, I mean, and the other is thought, so we don't bore our, our loyal listeners <laughs> since I stumped you, Manny Diaz. <laughs> well, I was about to say Manny because he's about five six. Um, so yeah, certainly um, that makes sense to me. I, I thought Klaus, yeah, you know, he's coached a bunch of good quarterbacks, so that was a good guess. But yep. uh, yeah, I, I see what you're saying there. But I did get Mike Leach at least, so I got one. Yep. All right, JC. Well, good stuff, good my stuff. man. We'll see how we do on our All picks right. on Monday. Enjoy your All weekend. Right. We're going to um, head on over okay. and get our man Todd Ellis from uh, the South Carolina Radio Network. He was a tremendous quarterback for them. So uh, we're going to head on over and chat with him. JC, be good, my man. All right. We'll see you. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Spurrier. I've been fortunate, blessed. A lot of good things have happened during my playing coaching career, a Heisman Trophy, national championship, a bunch of SEC championships also. And we're bringing that same attitude to the restaurant game. In the spring of 2021, we're opening Spurrier's Gridiron Grill right here in Gainesville at Celebration Point. We need some five-star recruits to help fill all the positions in the restaurant from the front of the house to the, to the back. So if you think you got what it takes to make the cut, I invite you to have a one-on-one and greet me with some of our management team on Wednesday, October 14th at the Hotel Indigo at Celebration Point. Learn all about our job opportunities with the restaurant. Now, let me make this clear. I'm only looking for the best of the best out there. So if you love your job, if you love the restaurant business, if you want to be part of the most elite team right here in Gainesville, Then we'll want to meet you, learn more about you, and hopefully work at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. With your help and the best of food, drinks, service all around, we'll make Spurrier's Restaurant the envy of all the Seminoles and Bulldogs everywhere. We're looking forward to working with you. Be there October the 14th. We plan to meet at Hotel Indigo at Celebration Point. So go to SpurrierDraft.com 
Fill out the application and we'll schedule you an interview accordingly. Take care and go Gators. Welcome to Pot Up with Matthews in the morning from the Crown Prevention Security System Studios. We are now going to go to the Titan Amar Hotline. We're joined by the voice of the South Carolina Gamecocks and former Gamecock quarterback, Todd Ellis. Good morning, Todd. How are you? Shane, I'm well, man. I'm just glad to, we got a little bit of college football. I wasn't sure we were going to two or three months ago. So uh, pleased to be going to Gainesville in the swamp, even as a heavy underdog. Well, let's talk about South Carolina game one. Uh, first of all, your thoughts on Colin Hill being named the starter over Holinsky. Were you surprised? I was not, Shane. Lord knows you and I have been to enough practices in our day, uh, watching quarterback play and play in the position. It was pretty clear to me, and that is not a knock on Ryan Helensky. Uh Ryan, I thought, improved what I saw mechanics-wise and uh, overall on his uh, – uh, growth in the game and command uh, from last season to this fall. Boy, but Colin is just a guy who, number one, throws as pretty a pass as you'll see. Uh, he reminded me of a guy named Anthony Wright who played at South Carolina, who went on to play in the NFL for a while, who just had this over-the-ear, high-release, beautiful pass that was easy to catch. And uh, he's got a great throwing arm, big time league, big guy. His only downfall was, you know, he had, he's never been able to stay healthy. He's never played more than four games straight without an ACL. And he's wow. had three of them in his career. And, uh, you know, I'm not exactly Mr. Mobile in my career. And I'm not sure anybody would have called you, um, uh, you know, a dual threat running when you were back when you were playing. But, you know, he's really not that mobile. He can't escape. But that was really his only his downside. But what that's given in talking to him now, Shane, which kind of makes sense, he, he just is like, I don't care. I've been hurt before. I'm throwing caution into the wind. I'm comfortable in the pocket. If I get hurt again, I get hurt again. It is what it is. And really, he's playing with that. A lot of poise. He's a um, a veteran guy. I know Mike, Mike Bobo's offense very well. So when I watched him practice, I wasn't surprised that much. And again, I'm not knocking Alinsky. I just thought Colin Hill was better, at least at this point right now. Gotcha. Uh, when you look at the game from uh, the other night against uh, Tennessee, offensively, they, they look pretty good to me. Uh, a little more organized. Uh, obviously, Colin Hill knows the system. The pick six was probably the big play in the game. But did you see an improvement on the offensive side of the ball than what you saw last year? I did, for the most part, as a whole. Um, I thought the right side of our line was a little soft. I thought that that was being problematic to the overall scheme, and we are struggling to find a right tackle. I think the guard stuff can be made up in Javon Gwynn, but other than that, no question. The shifting, the organization, the motion, um, uh, highlighting your playmakers when you can get them a good spot. And frankly, Shane, the running backs who, if you put them on everybody else's roster and you started picking your first, your next, these guys are going to fall in the middle of the pack. There's not a superstar in there, but they were grinders and they got back and gained yards a lot on their own some. So we were better there. And of course, Shy Smith, who we thought we need to have be a superstar, played like one with 10 catches and uh, a touchdown. We need another wide receiver to emerge. And then the tight ends are good players. And I think as long as Hill's there, we're moving it. You know, in the modern game now, I think we're going to be pretty good moving the ball between the 20s. But you know how hard it is. You got to have a score. You got to have somebody that catches it underneath, breaks between two defenders, maybe a jump ball in the end zone. And that worries me more than anything. But yes, I agree with you. Overall offense. Offensively, no comparison to the group that averaged 21 points a game a year ago. On the defense side of the ball, we all know most champs a defensive-minded guy. Do you like what they're doing on defense, and how do you think, or do you, what do you think Will's going to do to try to slow down this this high-powered Florida offense? Right, uh, and that's the real secret right now. And of course, as always, injuries has an impact. It, but Mukwamu, our second team All SEC uh, corner, and a guy everybody is saying can play at the next level, is out with a groin injury. I don't know that he's out for this ball game. He did practice yesterday, but you know how that goes. He could go and warm up spine and first play have a problem with it. So we don't have him. I think that's a huge problem because we don't rotate as well. Kind of those 
top five, six guys. Some of them play safety and corner, and the rotation is with those top guys. You start dipping out with one of those guys not being in there, then it's going to be problematic against Florida. But we've got a good front seven. We lost one linebacker last week. He's going to be out for a couple of weeks with a hip injury, but we're pretty good there. We can't get any thinner. Ernest Jones is a, is a mainstay in the middle. He can play in anybody's lineup at the middle linebacker. And then the front seven are good. We're not as big. You know, we're not a, there's not a bunch of 300 pounders in there, but they're athletes. They can crease you. Um, pretty good rotation as well. But, you know, I'd like to say there's some stoppage going to be involved in this. The likelihood is, is that we've got to get Florida behind the chains. It can't be trask in that crowd on uh, you know second and five and and second and four all the time it'll be a, a long night we need to get him in some lost yardage plays so we can put some pressure on him and then frankly even with that plan it's it's got to be a south Carolina win at you know 32 28 or 35 31 uh, i just think both these teams are pretty dang good on offense and there's likely going to be some scoring now i don't know as much about florida's defense and why Ole Miss was able to capitalize like they are. Lane Kiffin's a pretty dang play, good play caller, but uh, I suspect that stopping Florida is probably an extreme. Holding them on so you can be there in the fourth quarter is the the big one. You know, this the Gamecocks have been leading in this ball game in the last two uh, matches between them going into the fourth quarter. Now that's not unusual in our league to be close, and the fourth quarter is the difference. But you know, the, the, we got to be in that position again. Get to the fourth quarter close, and then hope some of those plays fall the South Carolina way. Todd, you've been watching a lot of Southeastern Conference football for a long time, calling games, you know, and I've said on my show here, just the, the state of college football has changed. The days of, you know, these great SEC defenses holding people under 20 points, those days are over. Would you agree with that? There's no question. And the shocking thing about that is, is the money is raised in the coaching levels. It's, of course, not only affected the offensive coaches, but probably more the defensive coaches because they started coming down from the league. They started bringing these schemes. And even though you got these own blitzes and a lot of different better disguises, um, you have got offenses now that change up so much the spread back to the tight formation it's hard to stop anybody in open space and you know Shane you remember the biggest difference I saw when I when I was in my little very short stint in professional football was probably the linebacker play and some of the edge guys who could not only uh, stop the run, but rush the passer at the same time. The college level linebackers generally don't cover as well. Uh, they generally can't do both, and that gives offenses a lot of a lot of advantage. And and these underneath things, short throws, and open space plays result in a lot of points. I don't think it's going back. Um, you know, right now it's harder to find tight ends and fullbacks. Uh, yes, some of those guys are going to to be edge players and defensive ends, and and there's some big safeties out there. Uh, but it's still about those wide receivers getting them in, a, in an open area and letting them make plays. Yep. Speaking of tight end, Florida has a, a star at the tight end position, a huge mismatch. And I've just been trying to think to my head, you know, great defensive coaches, when you think of Bill Belichick, Saban, they always try to take your best player away. Do you think Muschamp, you know, you can double him. I think the way to, to stop Kyle Pitts is you got to try to jam him at the line of scrimmage yeah. and have somebody over the top to help just kind of reroute him, uh, take away the timing. Do you think they will have some kind of plan like that? They, they do. And we actually have a player named Jamar Brown who did not play in this past game. He was just kind of getting ready for a knee injury against the balls. And he's in that linebacker safety mode. Is he a matchup for him perfectly? No, he's not a freak like uh, Pitts is by any means. But he's a better guy that could be in that. But I totally agree with you. What I saw against Ole Miss is you tight end just running free with no obstruction off the line and no time frame, easily getting into routes. And, you know, you throw it up to him and – you let him get into his route, it's problematic. So I don't think there's a complete stoppage there, but Will will have a plan. I promise you, obviously, he coached in the NFL and has been in this league a long time. It's not the first uh, great tight end, but he's pretty special. Now, I'll tell you what, yeah. he is a good-looking player, a good-looking no player. Doubt. Last thing for you, we're speaking with Todd Ellis here on the Titan Amar Hotline. Todd, uh, Coach Muschamp, uh, I think this is year five for him, maybe year six. Mm -hmm. I've lost track. Um, year five. Is, is this a is this a must win? You know, have a really good year, but with the pandemic, he may last another year. What's he got to do to to maintain his job at South Carolina? 
Well, you know, I'll give you the quick on the finances. Number one, every team in the SEC is going to lose $40, $50 million because of the pandemic and the lack of attendance, concessions, and the other um, uh, money that comes from the scholarships and all of these fees and the Gators background and all that stuff that we get. Every program is going to be losing that amount of money. You put that on the fact that almost everyone else is going to be getting a pass because of that, then the market for new coaches, even if you wanted to do that, is impossible uh, to probably get a new coach who would be coming out unless you go hire a coordinator, which of course happens a lot. So I, I think he gets a pass almost no matter what. I really do. And that's only because it's the financial circumstances. He's on the border anyhow. And Will was recruited well. He's one of his best classes was last year. He's already got a number two quarterback in the country committed. There's other good players. Defensive line's got five stars all over it that are young. They're freshmen, but they're, they're going to be playing a lot more. Unless it goes real bad, Shane, I think he's going to move on to his sixth year at South Carolina. And gotcha. and I'm not against that. I'm actually in favor of that. Mm-hmm. I'm just telling you the reality of the situation, even if you want to go in the other direction. Well, are you are you coming down to call the game, or are you having to call it? I am. Yeah, we got a skeleton crew. There's going to be just four of us. Tommy, my color man, uh, Suggs is going to stay up in the studio and try to uh, provide some guy, and we're going to try to be safe. But we're coming to the swamp. I just don't feel like I can call games on television. I, I know Mick's got some different circumstances are going on, but uh, I'll right. be there. All right. Well, have a safe trip, my man. We appreciate you taking the time to join our program. And uh, I don't want to say I wish the Gamecocks luck, but hope, let's just call it a hope it's a good game. There you go. Well well said. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. As always, right. I appreciate being with you. Yes, sir. That's Todd Ellis, the voice of the South Carolina Gamecocks and former quarterback. Join us on the Titan MR hotline. This is Shane Matthews. Thank you for listening to Pot Up with Matthews in the Morning. You can also check me out on Inside the Huddle with Steve Russell and the head ball coach, Steve Spurrier. Tune in every Tuesday during football season on WRUF 98.1 FM, 8.50 a.m. at 10 o'clock in the morning, or find us on your favorite podcast platform. We want to take this moment to thank all our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Our Gridiron sponsors are Crime Prevention Security Systems, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Area Rug Masters, your number one choice in Gainesville for all your rug cleaning services. Meldon Law, where you matter most. Peachland Dental, Gator Nation's first choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte. Celebration Point Town Center, Center State Bank, Chris Doring Mortgage. Some of our touchdown sponsors are Style Cuts, Ironwood Golf Course, TB Financial, Meadowbrook Golf Course, Dar Shackow Insurance, Pomodoro Cafe, Big Mills Cheese Steaks, MB Listing, Cornerstone Financial, McDonald's Gainesville, My IT Masters, Gainesville Neon and Signs, 84 Lumber, Tropical Smoothie, Chick-fil-A on Archer Road, Aver and Smith Personal Injury Attorneys, Orange Theory Fitness, PRP Regeneration Specialist, and Dowling Signs. Again, thank you for all the great businesses that support the show. Please remember, if you like what we are doing here, thank our sponsors and support the businesses that support us. At Chris Doring Mortgage, they do mortgage lending right, helping home buyers throughout Gainesville and North Central Florida. Call Chris Doring Mortgage today, 352-244-0840. This day in sports is brought to you by Area Rug Masters, Gainesville's most trusted area rug cleaners. With free pickup and delivery, Area Rug Masters is the convenient way to keep the focal point of your room looking brand new. Call Area Rug Masters, 352 448 5999. This day in sports in 1994, legendary. Miami head coach Don Shula beats his son, who was David, the head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals. First ever NFL meeting between father and son. Dolphins defeat the Bengals 23-7 to uh, this day in sports back in 1994. Uh, we really want to thank JC for uh, joining the program and also Todd Ellis, voice of the South Carolina Gamecocks, um, taking some time to give us uh, some insight on Carolina. Um, my prediction for the game, folks, I think Gator is going to win a close one. If you want to call it close, 38-24 this week. Uh, should be fun. Hope everybody that goes to the game stays safe. It's going to be a weird atmosphere, no doubt about it. 
Uh, but today's show is a wrap brought to you by Rap Spot. Take care, and we'll see you on Monday. Thank <laughs> you.